the Timmy and Helen show. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So well, what do you love? What are your dreams? What do I love? What are my dreams? Besides me. I wanted to say, I wanted to say, I love you. <laughs> I love, I love this planet. And my dream is peace. And that may sound like something everyone would say, but I really mean it. So. What planet are you from? <laughs> Serious. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. I'm from Planet Sirius, but I've been on I'm this planet. I'm from Planet Silly. Planet Zilly? You're from Planet <laughs> Zilly? <laughs> I'm from Planet... I'm from the planet of the Teehees. <laughs> Teehees! Don't, don't even. Oh, I will. I already started it. Just don't even go there. <laughs> I went there. So what, what are some things that... what What do you love to do? I love to have deep and powerful conversations. That is something I have craved and done my whole life. I think if I meet people and they cannot go deeper into the topic of life and philosophy, then I'm not really interested in a conversation with them. That's, I just don't like the superficial world. You know, I, we're on this planet for a reason and there's such a big purpose in our life. And if people aren't ready to hear that there's more than the eyes meet, then, then I have not, not much to say, you know? What do yeah, you, you think? Like, you like to go beyond the surface into the depths. Exactly, into the depth of the ocean. You know, I like to swim deep, even if I can't see what's in front of me anymore. So that's why you like me. That's one of the many reasons I love you. I don't just like you. I love you. <laughs> and I have a conversation like that with you every day. And that makes what we have really, really special. Yeah, that's true. You know, just waking up to you and waking up to the feeling of there's another day and another powerful moment in our life where we can change the world and help the world to evolve. That is such a powerful thought and such a powerful feeling. And I'm forever grateful for that. No. I mean, everything we did to get to where we are as a couple, as as humans, you and I both, the work we've done spiritually to even get to this point of, of meeting each other, it takes a lot of work, a lot of work that a lot of people are not willing to take or ready to take because they're already overwhelmed with everyday life. You know, and that's where I feel that I can be of a lot of help as a life coach. This is the things that I love to do. You know, I want to listen to people and I want to help them to grow. I want to help them to actually get to that point of meeting someone who is so special like you are to me. I think you're already very, really great at that. Thank you. You're an ambassador. <laughs> you know, and, and you've already helped so many people just with their not just their issues but just just you know because you have you have a deep a deeper perspective on things you know mm -hmm. and that's why i like you mm. <laughs> because because we do we do talk about the, the deeper aspects of things and uh you know look beyond the surface and the veil
Yeah. I, I couldn't be with a man who's superficial. You know, I, if, if you wouldn't have gone through all the experiences you went through, including even after we met the experiences we both had together and apart from each other, then I would have probably not even met you. Like, or you know, it wouldn't be the same. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't, you know, I mean, just the idea of, of traveling together, you know, it can scare the other person a lot. Like if, like it was always your dream to travel, right? Yeah. You're the only one crazy enough to say yes. <laughs> and I said yes pretty, pretty quickly as soon as you were mentioning that. Like, I mean, not, not that you asked me to do it with you yet, but we were both ready to dream about it together. Right. You'd be surprised but how... How much saying that to somebody like somebody you're uh, I was dating a couple people you know say yeah I want to travel it's my dream it's it's, it's scary I'm like whoa what are we gonna do how are we gonna plan it how are we gonna have enough money how are we gonna blah, 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 blah. and it's like it's it's my dream I'm gonna make it work mm -hmm. you know and, yeah. and we and we did it we're doing it exactly I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but we manage. I don't care. <laughs> we manage every day, you know. And if one of us is going through a hard time, the other one is there. We're there for each other. And we've had our issues. I mean, you know, let's be real about it. Like everyone has their issue in relationships and all. But in the end, our love is stronger. And that is what is important in a relationship. You know. It's important to talk. And and not just talk about the logic and the reasoning, trying to make everything reasonable and lot. Some things are just not reasonable. Some things are, are just emotional. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to learn that with you, and you also had to learn that with me. We had different ways. You know, a lot of times I've calmed down now, but a lot of times I I'd be like motherfucking. Bitch, fucking sub up, fuck. You know, and you're like, what? What's wrong? And I'm like, I'm just, I just need to curse it out. I just need to, I just need to say it. <laughs> and yeah. I already feel better. You know, sometimes I just need to throw something. Right. Or, or listen to, to, to heavy music, you know? Yeah. And, it, it... and just, you know, rage it out. <laughs> Right. And it, it took me some time to get used to like listening to certain music and stuff, but I got into it very quickly, you know, and also just. Damn I right learned... you did. <laughs> and I learned through or you. Else. <laughs> and I learned through you to, to, to curse sometimes, because honestly, it really <laughs> helps me feel better when I say certain words and when I just let it out for a second, you know. Or if I just go ah, for a second, you know, it, it helps me to just digest whatever we're going through. To breathe is a wonderful thing, but it's not always the only thing that helps. You know, I like to throw a pillow sometimes just into my bed or to do a little pillow fight with myself. And <laughs> I it taught happens. you all the bad words. <laughs> yes, you did. But, I taught I taught I taught you the, the dark side of English. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I didn't hear them before. I just I wasn't I wasn't using them so much. And I, I'm not using them that much at all either. It's it it's for the right moment and the right time that I use them. And that is very powerful. When you don't right. give a fuck. When yeah, you don't time a time and a <laughs> I love it when you curse. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in your songs. So cute. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, well, I used to work construction all the time. So I hear, I hear fuck every other word sometimes from these guys. And they're like, fucking motherfucking fucking fucking. I'm like, yeah, fucking fucking motherfucker fucking fuck. And I'm like, yeah, fucking right, fucking fuck. Like, are we having a conversation or are we just, I don't fucking know. <laughs> All right, then. No, but 
sometimes that gets, that gets that gets to be too much. It's just like, yo, let's let's talk about something uh, intelligent. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you're no longer yeah. working there. Honestly, right. Like, You've done that enough in your life. And you are so much more empowering. But because you have worked there, you are able to talk to anyone and to connect to anyone who's either coming from these kind of jobs or who is a philosopher or who is a creative artist like you are, you know? And I think that's wonderful. You have, you have walked a lot of paths in your life. Yeah, I have been a lot of things i've always been me you know my may have many moods but i still have the same i'm still the same person you know i can be okay. silly i can be angry i have every right I've, you know I, i think everybody does yeah maybe sometimes people think they only have to be one thing and one personality or else and again if they deviate from it then they're They don't belong in their in their um, place that they that they think they belong in society or whatever their group. I've right. seen that. I've, I've observed a lot in my life. You know, I haven't always spoken my mind or or talked to people. Sometimes I just a lot of times I just observe and just you know, not in judgment really, but I just observe and and you know make my own conclusions philosophically and and psychologically i guess right and honestly when you go and you become a musical theater person like me that is one of the first things you learn you are you can you can you know try to improvise and so on but you are there to observe you are like one of the mm -hmm. first jobs we got or like homeworks we got was to just sit in a restaurant and observe people and try to create a story for that person hmm. basically assuming things right in a way yeah. but in a good way like if you saw a mom with a child you would make up something for yourself and you would start creating a character you know so you did that naturally for yourself you already observed a lot in your life and that makes you very wise right I guess I always try to see the, the core of what what goes on, you know, mm -hmm. instead of making up my own stories. You know, I try to I try to be non-judgmental. There, there's always, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm not judgmental. Sometimes I judge. Sometimes I I come to my conclusions, and it and it can help me, you know, mm -hmm. to use my judgment. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm -mm. No. But I'd also say, since we're talking about judgment, to be a good judge, you have to hear all the sides. You know, if I'm only listening to my own thoughts or going by what I observe, I don't know the whole story. Right. I don't know somebody's whole story, especially when it comes to... Uh, judging other people i don't judge other people if i don't know them if i don't never talk to them as soon as i talk to them and i and i know their actions then i can have a little bit more of a judgment but you know i think nowadays we live in a world where we pre-judge people before we even know the first thing about them yeah and i don't really agree with that and we're also living in a world where everyone is guilty before they're innocent right before that it, yeah innocent. that's what i mean yeah it's, you know it's a very very topsy-turvy world like david ike would say mm -hmm. and maybe that's the nature of the mind to always try to like figure things out so you have a, a better understanding of what of what to do and you know try to the mind always wants to relate things to what it's already experienced Mm -hmm. you no know, so i get it but i think we can be more evolved than that and let our minds rule us yeah we let our minds rule us then we're always going to be subjected to be mind controlled 
Mm -hmm. And that very much goes on too. Very you know? much so. And I see it. It's like, and I never saw myself as part of any group. You know, I'm all kinds of different things, and I, I, I accept that about myself. I like it about myself. Sometimes it's a little, little uh, isolating. Mm -hmm. A little lonely. Sure, but you know. I I remember in high school, everyone had, it falls into the little groups and stuff, and I would go to all kinds of different people and groups and spend a little bit of time. And I'm like, all right, see you. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just like that. I don't have to stay with one group just to feel like I belong. Right. You no. Know? <clears throat> well, you and I both have had to go to different schools in our in our childhood, and like I went to thirteen different schools in my life, and that also right. makes me not always keep my friends right I, i'm not one of those kids that always had the same people always stayed in the same place you know sure. and you start to observe more you start to as you as you said you know go to different groups and become a part of different groups rather than just one and stick to one thing at a time i think that makes it very special and i can imagine that a lot of people can relate to that feeling sure You know, it helped me with my job later on in life, too. You know, because I always had to go to different jobs and I would get laid off because, you know, it wasn't either wasn't needed anymore. The job was done or they just didn't want me on the job anymore, which happens. Yeah. Um, but it, it helped me because I was detached, you know, it, it um Even if I got along with people, I wasn't so attached to them or, you know, created a bond and I feel like I, I would miss them or anything. I'm just like, whatever, go into the next one. Right. You know, some of my other jobs, are, you know, I run a, a loader or a forklift and I would go to all the different trades and do things for all of them. You know, mm -hmm. I was like kind of like a go between of all the different groups. Mm hmm. You know, and I thought it was I thought it was fun. You know, because I don't have to I don't have to spend so much time with the same people. Right. That's a good point. <laughs> right. You know. And I can I can bring us into family. Like when you're when you, you don't get to choose our family, our default family that we're born into. You know, maybe, maybe some people believe we, we choose before we incarnate or whatever, but regardless, you don't really get to choose how those people are going to be when they bring it into the world. I can see that we, our <clears throat> souls choose them for lessons so that we can, we as humans can grow the most. So whatever mm -hmm. we're going through in our families, that helps us to grow as a person in the future. You know, like I was very isolated as a child. I was an only child. Uh, my father was never there. My mother took care of me, but she also gave me a lot of space and room and I would just be by myself. And sometimes I would have a lot of kids around me. I would love to do that. You know, I, I was more like the host whenever I went somewhere. That's just how I was. I was the leader. I was, I told everyone what to do. <laughs> yeah. That's just how I've been my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, you know, I, but, but being forced to move so much and being in so many different places I had to deal with anxieties that I had as a as a young girl and, and young woman of time. I was always afraid I would not have enough time in my life. And I was always sad to say goodbye. I would run away when when someone when I knew that person was about to leave, I wouldn't want to say goodbye. And I realized that yeah, as a young teenager, that that was a big issue for me. So I started to focus on being present instead of being in the past or the future. 
most of my life. I was always just somewhere in the past or in the future and just worried about, you know, what to do. And I, I realized that I need to be more present with myself, you know, more focused on the here and now. And all of the things in my childhood led me to where I am today. So I'm grateful for it. Yeah, that's good. You know, <laughs> I, I've learned. I've learned a lot just from having to deal with my my starter family. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, believe me, I resisted it. I was, I had resentment. You know, I was I was raised to be, you know, in in, in a very toxic environment. You know alcohol abuse and, and just violence and cursing and um, just things being destroyed, taken away, just very impulsively, not even for a reason. And, and it's very, it, 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 lead, it led me to be like, eh, you know, whatever. You know, it, I, I guess it taught me to be laid back about you know, things being taken or destroyed or <clears throat> it also gave me complex, you know, not to, not to trust anybody. And, and, and I don't want to tell anybody anything because they're just going to use it against me. Cause that's what my family did to me. You know, he taught me how everyone's an asshole, you know, and I didn't want to believe that, but I think I still absorbed that in a way where I didn't really want to, trust anybody and I want to hide and not tell anybody any information about me because they'll use it against me. Like I'm always on trial or something. Cause that's how I felt growing up in my, in my family. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my mom and my dad made me feel like that all the time. Like I'm like, I'm always in court, you know, but whatever it's, I'm grateful for it because I had to learn to <clears throat> I had to learn to forgive it, to forgive myself, you know, just and and let people be. I, I there was a time where I wanted to help my family and and change them for the better, and my my brother and sisters, I tried to take them out and do different things and different like cultural things and just just things as as a family um but you know never seemed like they appreciated it and didn't really want to and i felt like i was forcing them and i didn't mean i didn't mean to do that but i don't know it's just it is what it is it's just i just learned to be loosey-goosey with it <laughs> To present <laughs> about it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just whatever. My thing is not everybody's thing, and you know, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't have to be everybody's person. You just have to be you, and people will sure. start to appreciate you for who you are. Right. Well, I no, think I it's... Mean... Hmm? Yeah. No, it... I think it's important to to reflect on the lessons we learned through our childhood, you know, to become better human beings. And and I had to learn to let go of my family too, you know. Doesn't mean that I don't appreciate what they've done for me in my life or in our lives, you know. But I'm walking my own path and so are you, you know, and the two of us, we are the union, you know, to go back to our divine relationship and our and any th- kind of relationship in between people. I think when, especially when you are partners, soulmates, or twin flames, or whatever people want to label it as, the two most important people are the partners, and the family is a much further circle away, if anything, like a, a ripple. Right. When you throw a stone and you have a ripple effect, you have the one stone, that's the union. And then you have those little ripples coming. And the closest ripple is your union, your relationship together. 
and then come friends and and partners and I mean other friends and then maybe somewhere is the family if anything right well we're we are our own family because we choose each other exactly you know we are the family that we have chosen yes and I think that's that's a good point mm -hmm. you don't get to choose your family but you you can you can choose your you know your new family <laughs> Yes. And a lot of issues between partners are because one of the partners does not uh, prioritize their other partner as the one most important person in their life. Right. And that's where a lot like of issues are. Your extended family, I think, it always comes second to your to your closest family, like who you live with and who you, you know, especially who you share a bed with. Don't you think that's, your, that's the closest person you're with? You know? Right. I completely agree. And that is very important. And it's an important lesson I had to learn too, because I used to be someone before I met you. And, you know, I used to like be, carry my, my, my heart on my tongue, as people say. I don't know if you, I think you say that differently in English, but in German, on, there's on that. A sleeve. Yeah. My heart on a sleeve. Um, yeah. I would just tell everyone how I feel. And I would tell everyone my story and I would just be open and just, you know, not, not care, you know, and I would just, yeah, I would just be me and I would just like, you know, be like a Gemini that I am and just like, blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but then you met me. What? Then you met me. <laughs> well, then I met you and I realized that there's something more important and that is to, you know, to keep us the closest. And then I have my friends and chosen family members that can sh I can share things with, but you are the most important part of my life. And you have priority above everyone else. And that is a beautiful thing, you know, and some people can't deal with that. Oh, okay. I told you to keep quiet while I kidnap you. Take you <laughs> That's what they want to believe. <laughs> That's what other people want to believe. No, you never kidnapped me, you. You just captured my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I just got a message that our time is almost up for the video. Uh-oh. Which means we've been talking for almost... I mean, I've got to say goodbye so you don't have the final say. All right. All right. <laughs> Unless you want the final say. Good talk. And uh, that was, we talked about a lot of things. Uh, yeah, we'll talk more later about more random things. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have more of an idea of what we want to talk about. Mm hmm we put it in different topics. We, we, I could just talk and talk and talk about the things we talk about. And I do. Because I can just talk to you about anything. And I love you. I love you. I'm glad to live this way with you, even though it's uncertain sometimes when you have to adapt. And sometimes it sucks. But it's... It's an amazing life, you know, and it beats living the old life of, you know, what we're talking about. So anyway, good talk. Good talk. See you later. <laughs>